Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. And happy new year to you. <laughs> yeah, same to you. Right. I gave it 200 <laughs> students are ready this morning for the yeah. lecture. Okay. All right. Uh, level 200 students. Yes. Um, welcome back to campus. And as we always do every year, psychology of human development is there to help us know more about ourselves, to know more about our students that we teach, and to be able to help them when the need arises. Um, I'm not going to say that it's only for level 200 students. Level 300 can do a recap of all that they've learned last year because whatever you do in the classroom, you need psychology of human development to be able to help your students. Um, this morning, um, I think this is the beginning, the commencement of the radio lectures for this semester. So I'm the one opening it up. And so we are going to look at some basic concepts in psychology of human development. And I would like to add learning because it is the reason why we are learning the psychology of human development. But before that, and those of us who went for lecture last week, we did some five minutes, ten minutes um, uh, exercise concerning the new curriculum that has emerged um, last year. Our young ones, the busy school, started using the new curriculum. And with the new curriculum, what we came across was that it started as um before the new one came we have the objective based curriculum and now we have introduced the standard based curriculum and there are some competences that we need to exhibit in the classroom um we have sat down and realized that though it's for our busy schools we also need those kind of competences in our lives and as teachers or student teachers we will need it so that we can also um, transform our students with these competences. And so we talked about some six core competences in the new curriculum. Um, we discussed critical thinking and problem solving skills. We talked about communication and collaboration. We also talked about cultural identity and global citizenship, creativity and innovation digital literacy then the sixth one is leadership and personal development all we are saying is that as we go through the uh, course online with all the various topics what are some of the things that you can come out when it comes to the competences are you going to learn critical thinking and um, issue of problem solving um, how diverse are the students in your classroom so that you'll be able to have that mindset of saying that there's some form of cultural identity in our students. So how would we be able to help them when it comes to teaching and learning? Then how can we be creative and innovative in our classroom, especially when we have a diverse students or different kinds of students in the classroom? They are coming from different cultural backgrounds and all that. How are we going to help? Then again, if there are no... Um, resources or limited resources in the classroom how can we be creative and innovative enough to be able to help these students then one of the things that we want to talk about is um, um think about is our digital uh, literacy no matter how we do it or wherever we go now uh, ict is with us we cannot run away with it especially with the uh, uh, covid uh, rising cases it is always good to go the digital way then again, how can we lead and um, our students and develop ourselves regarding knowing more about them? How would you learn to be able to help them in the classroom? And I think these were the six core competences that we talk about. And um, underneath all these um, six core competences, we have other sub competences that I believe that are instructors will take us through and when you look at our course outline we realize that we've made uh, 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 we've left a portion whereby you can put in all the competences that you think you can exhibit or identify in the topics that we discuss 
uh, during our lecture times i just want to also encourage us that we should make use of our online system the v class is very helpful all the lectures are on it and i believe that as we are listening all of us have enrolled on the v class and we are making use of the opportunity that uew has given us so let's learn from it and with that too apart from the textbooks that we use in our classrooms more opportunities have been given us on v class a lot of links that you can go in there and learn from it now to our basic concepts in psychology of human development and learning what is all about psychology what is all about psychology what do you know or what meaning can you make out of the word psychology we all talk about it people do certain things and other people will say that he doesn't know that i read psychology and i know all that he's doing and i can perceive the things that will come when he's finished doing this thing it means that some of us have some form of idea what psychology is all about and so maybe you have said it in your mind or you said it to a friend but we are saying that psychology is a scientific study of the mind and behavior psychology is a scientific study of the mind and behavior it helps to explain how we think how we feel and how we act both individually and as a group so when you study psychology a lot of people know that you'll be able to know what the mind is thinking and how people will behave especially with what they are thinking one of the things that i learned in my counseling psychology is that um whatever we think is the way we behave because it it, it influences our behavior thinking influences our behavior and so it helps us to explain how we think how we feel and act whether in groups or as a person and psychology as we all mention it some people may think it's an english word but um, history tells us that it comes from the greek word psyche meaning breath or spirit or soul or the mind it may mean the breath the spirit soul or mind and we have taken the mind aspects and the lord the logic in it means the study of something so in all we are saying that it is the study of the mind now with our psychology a lot of people will tell you i'm a psychologist but have we taken the pains to ask them where or which area of psychology they have studied there are different branches of psychology and one of the things that i've um, experienced is that any time i teach students when it comes to psychology some people will approach you and will want to um ask if or do an inquiry whether they can branch into psychology because psychology is an interesting um, field and we have a lot of specialization in psychology we have developmental psychology we have child psychology we have counseling psychology where i am coming from we have educational psychology we have industrial psychology or organizational psychology we have abnormal psychology we have clinical psychology we have so many um, um, specialization when it comes to psychology and this all this um, um, field have been put in um, pure and applied psychology so those of us doing the counseling psychology educational psychology uh, clinical psychology industrial or organizational psychology all these areas are the applied then we have the pure psychology where you go more detail to know a lot of things but then most of us are into the applied psychology and one of the things that we want to 
go into when it comes to the branches is the educational psychology is the educational psychology that is the main reason why we are learning the psychology of human development because we will need it in our classroom we will need it in our schools we will need it as teachers to be able to teach our students so when we talk about educational psychology what do we mean people will ask themselves why do we want to learn psychology of human development for learning you know that you are a student teacher so you you want to know something about teaching and learning to be able to impact something to your students but why do we want to learn psychology of human development what would it do to us okay as i move on maybe at the latter parts of the um, lecture if there is enough time i'll take you uh, through some importance of we learn psychology of human development but then let's talk about the educational psychology educational psychology when we say educational psychology it is a process of applying the knowledge of psychology to education so the um, little that you know about psychology how would you apply that in your uh, teaching and learning process how would you be able to help your students to be able to know themselves and to be able to know that I'm different from an, uh, another person and so this is what I can do to help myself and you as a teacher how you'll be able to help your student to succeed in the academic laurels so therefore education psychology is the study of how people learn is the study of how people learn so it deals with the problems the process and products of education psychology educational psychology deals with the problems that comes with education the process that we go through and the product of education it again involves both studying learning in the classroom and general learning across the lifespan it involves both studying learning in the classroom and general learning across the life span one of the interesting things i like about this statement is general learning across the life span not only when you are in the university that you need educational psychology not even when you are the teacher in the classroom that is when you need educational psychology it we need it almost everywhere and across our life span because each day of our lives we are learning whether you are in the classroom or not we learn and so educational psychology knowing something about it or having knowledge about it will help you to be able to know how to deal with people you come across when it comes to the classroom or even out of the classroom so then if we are going through educational psychology what are the importance of the educational psychology what are the importance we want to know more about psychology and apply it in our education in the classroom setting out of the classroom but still we are learning but then we are talking about educational psychology somebody will say that why not the general psychology but psychology of human development and so when we go through the development stages and its concept we'll be able to know some of the reasons why we need it but then let's look at the importance of educational psychology one it helps teachers to know how learning process should be initiated it helps teachers to know how learning process should be initiated, how to motivate, how to memorize, or learn. It helps teachers to know how learning process should be initiated, how to motivate, how to memorize, or learn. So with this, when you learn educational psychology, you will know more about the person you are dealing with or the student you the teacher will know more about yourself 
And so when you are dealing with your students, you'll be able to know how to initiate the teaching and learning process. And as we move on in our course outline, the topics, we will learn something on motivation. How would I be able to motivate my students so that they can learn? How would I be able to encourage them more? Even when things are going tough, when the concept is so difficult and they are not getting it, how would I initiate it? How would I encourage and motivate them to be able to learn? And how would I be able to help them to memorize or learn something? Not doing it in a root learning way, but to be able to apply it to their lives so that it becomes part and parcel of them. And then again, it helps teachers to direct or guide students in the right direction to canalize students' abilities in the right way. So how you, the teacher, will be able to direct or guide students in the right way to be able to canalize what they have learned. That is why we are studying educational psychology. Again, it helps teachers to know the problems of individual differences. It helps teachers to know the problems of individual differences. And it's one of the things that I also like about uh, um, teaching this course because you, we are all human beings. We all have the same number of legs, um, same hands and all that. But we all have different ways of doing things. How would I be able to help my students? know the diversity in the classroom, the variations in the classroom, so that I'll be able to help my students learn and succeed. Then again, it helps solve learning problems of students. When you have students in the classroom, sometimes some of the uh, developmental processes that people go through influence their way of learning. And so they may have a lot of learning problems. So as we move on in the um, um, lecture and we talk about some of the topics, we will talk about some um, issues of, let's say, let me give an example of maybe a sickle cell anemia, where we have the SS people who are always with us in the classroom. I know one way or the other, some of us have come across some of them. They may have problems learning because they may miss classes most of the time because of the crisis that they go through um, as uh, being anemic uh, uh, patients. So we should be able to know some of the learning problems that come with a lot of developmental processes so that we will be able to tackle some of these issues. Then again, it helps the teacher to know how to evaluate a student whether the purpose or aim of the teaching and learning has been achieved. So how would I be able to evaluate my students to be able to know that what I have taught them, they have gotten it? Let me look at the differences in the classroom and let me look at their developmental backgrounds. It's also important so that I'll be able to know how to evaluate them. If we look at maybe um, when you go to big schools like, like the Roman Ridge and North Ridge Lyceum, the way you evaluate students will be different from when you will evaluate a student in some village schools because they do not have those kind of resources as those in the city and in big schools. So how would I be able to evaluate my students so that I'll be able to know whether the purpose of my teaching and learning has been achieved. How would I be able to do that? Okay, so um, some of us are listening to us. Um, we will open the lines. You can call using um, the number 0503923158. I'm taking that again. 0503 nine two three one five eight or zero three three two three two zero two zero one zero three three two three two zero two zero one or you can sms or whatsapp us with this number 
zero five zero three nine two three one five eight zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and so um i ended with talking about the importance of um educational psychology now let's come to our psychology of human development itself so we will start with the developmental psychology why developmental psychology why developmental psychology and why do we need that in our educational psychology why do we need that in our teaching and learning process so developmental psychology is a scientific study of systematic psychological changes that a person experiences over the course of his or her lifespan so that is from conception to death developmental psychology i'm taking it again it is the scientific study of systematic anytime i'm teaching and there are certain important phrases or the words that students should, should take cognizance of i always want to emphasize it it is the systematic psychological changes systematic is very very important that a person experiences over the course of his or her life span that is from conception to death and so all that we are going to learn in developmental psychology is that if the development does not go systematic or sequential as it's supposed to be then problems will okay it got to a time i remember taking this course and whenever i get to systematic or sequential students will repeat after me because they know i'm very particular about that if there is a distortion some way the thing will not be sequential as it's supposed to be it will not be systematic as it's supposed to be and so there will be problem in the lifespan development of the individual developmental psychology includes psychological factors that is studied over the lifespan so we'll talk about motor skills moral understanding acquiring language emotions problem solving personality self-concept and identity formation there is a whole lot to talk about when it comes to developmental psychology so across the lifespan let me even summarize it by saying that we want to deal with the physical or motor development we want to deal with the cognitive development we want to deal with the psychosocial or social emotional development of the individual because these three aspects talk so much about people and it influences their learning what are the aims of developmental psychology what are the aims of developmental psychology other people will say that what are the goals of developmental psychology it is to help describe behavior so that one should be able to describe what transpires across the lifespan of the human org organism when you learn developmental psychology you should be able to describe behavior how it goes on in the li um, life of the individual then again to explain this is to explain behavior why do people do the things they do what factors contribute to the child's way of thinking and talking not only children but we adults as well why do people do the things they do if i'm able to study the human uh, um, being and know what they do and how they behave and all those things you will be able to contribute to the people uh, the person's thinking and talking again one aim of the developmental psychology is to help to predict to make predictions about how one think and act we may not be um uh, specific or we we will not have the ready answer or, or already made answer for certain things but you will be able to um, um predict that this is what will happen if this person continues doing this when we learn more about developmental psychology 
if you look at people's behavior the way they think how they do their things you'll be able to know that if i give this person three four five years this is how the person will behave or the person will become that is when we'll be able to know the problems that goes on in the individual's life or the student's life and we are able to quickly help out so it is it helps to predict um, um how one thinks and acts to predict developmental changes as well then again when prediction is successful it can help the teacher or psychologist to make guesses so developmental psychology helps us to know how the changes will occur in the individual whether there will be success or no success you'll be able to know and these are the ways you will be able to know these things and be able to quickly come out with interventions to help the individual then again it helps to change or to influence and control behavior to make lasting changes in people's lives and so um, before we talked about the change i talked about coming out with interventions to be able to help the person how would i help influence and control the person's behavior so that there will be lasting changes in the person's life the lines are still opened you can call zero five zero three nine two three one five eight the same number you can send a whatsapp message or sms to the same line that is zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and you can also call with this number zero three three two three two zero two zero one okay now let's go to some basic concepts in psychology of yeah there's somebody on the line hello good morning hello good morning hello good morning yeah good morning you should call back okay um please call back because the line um sounds a bit faint so you can call back again for me thank you so we want to know something about the human development i'm going to read a short story in here if i won't say it's a, uh, maybe a synopsis just for us to understand certain things that the human development all talks about Alba is a college student who is taking a development okay good morning hello hello good morning okay let's continue it looks as if um we've lost the person so i'm starting with the short um story araba is a college student who is taking a developmental psychology class she's learned a lot about development or the way that people grow and change as they age she thinks about her life so far and realizes that she's developed quite a bit as a baby she couldn't walk or talk or do much of anything <clears throat> sorry then as she grew into a kid she learned how to walk run and learned how to express her thoughts and tell people what she wanted she learned how to recognize when she was feeling sad or lonely and how to deal with those emotions i believe we are listening to Arbe's uh, story where we are talking about her development as a teen Araba learned more complex things like algebra and critical thinking. She also learned how to think about others' needs as well as her own. 
and to recognize that just because she wants something it doesn't mean that she will get it as araba now transitions into adulthood she realizes that there is still a lot of development for her to do she will learn how to be in a healthy romantic relationship she will become a mom and grow into the role of caretaker her career will take off as she navigates more and more complex and demanding roles at work eventually araba will find that her life changes even more her children will move out and have children of their own she will retire and learn to sow or to garden in her spare time she will also learn how to deal with physical frailty as her eyesight starts to go and she de and develops weakness in her joints now what can we say about arabes developmental stages what can we say this is araba who grew and later realized that now she is old but she is just um taking count or re reflection of how her life has been how she started as a young girl and now in her teen years and she knows that gradually in some years to come she'll grow old she'll become weak and will have to retire in a lot of sense all these narrations of araba happen at all stages of a person's life it happens at all stages of a person's life okay so i have some um questions on our um media site so somebody is saying that good morning madam please with humility i suggest questions and contributions should be taken after the lecture to avoid interrupting thank you okay frank thank you very much for your suggestion um i think i'll head to that okay so maybe 10 minutes to time is even 10 minutes to time we'll see if we can make way for that um another person says that good morning madam i'm petra kofi from economics department um i think okay let me I'm Petra Kofi from Economics Department. Please, can you group the branches of psychology and appeal and apply psychology once again for me? I would surely do that. I would surely do that for you. Okay, I think that is all. Okay, so Francis, um, you are also, let me check Francis' question yeah francis from english department this this is my student so the question is on the importance of educational psychology the lecturer said it helps the teacher to know how to evaluate his or a student and she cited the example of students in cities and those in villages being evaluated differently now all these students those in the cities and those in villages write the same bc and wasi and i believe the same marking scheme etc is used for them Please, I want to know the lecture's view on this. Okay, so, Francis, um, I, I, I like your question. And um, I would like to say that I am not in Ghana Education Service. Um, neither am I in um, YEC to be able to determine how they do it. But they have um, a way of... <clears throat> sorry evaluating students what i i was saying is that there are a lot of opportunities for people in the cities and the opportunities that they give to those in the villages are limited are limited and we are uh, uh, um, aware of all these things as to how wayek does it i'm not so sure about that but i am saying it in my uh, view as uh, an educationist that if people have a lot of opportunities where they can make it their form of evaluation should be different from those who are in um, uh, um, 
less resourced environment okay so as to how they do it there maybe one of these days i have to go there and go and ask what are your scheme for marking wayek and bc and uh, wasi let me what wasi and bc when it comes to these people okay and in in any way the schools that i mentioned for you then uh, north ridge lyceum and the roman ridge most of them don't do the wasi examination they do the cambridge and all those things that is why i use that okay maybe if i, I had used the morning star then maybe you could have said that because i know morning star too they write they write the bec okay so their way of evaluating students is different from how they do for the less resourced communities because they are using a different kind of curriculum okay okay so let me go through a question that was being asked about the um pure and applied maybe this person wants to go into psychology okay so let me give examples with the pure psychology we have the general psychology that people learn we have abnormal psychology where we want to talk about the abnormal things that people do okay especially with mental health issues uh, because we are supposed to behave normally as an individual but people end up behaving abnormally so what are those things then we have social psychology we have experimental psychology we have physiological psychology we have parapsychology then we have geopsychology we have a lot of them okay then again with the applied psychology we have the educational psychology that is what we are doing because we are applying the psychology we know into education then we have clinical psychology we have a lot of clinical psychologists and even in the university we have um in our department we have about three clinical psychologists in there we have industrial psychology we have organizational psychology it's almost the same we have the legal psychology some people are into psychology but they want to go into law and other things we have military psychology we have political psychology and we have criminal psychology when you go to 37 for instance you will see some of the military people who are into psychology so they apply what they do in military into psychology so these are the few examples i will give then this is from uh, princess from social studies department um so princess is just trying to answer my question in saying that uh, Arabic is go Arabic is going through growth and maturity development that is good and that is one of the things i want to talk about before i leave this place so i think i've answered the ones on the facebook page is it yeah okay so um this is francisco please madam i want to know the aims of educational technology okay somebody is on the line okay um i think we lost the person uh francisco educational technology will come in i think uh, this semester you are doing educational psychology i don't know whether they will come to uh, tomorrow or on friday or thursday but you need to listen out for educational technology this is psychology of human development and learning and i do not want to deviate from the norm so you have to always be alert educational technology will also come with your lecture so that you asked your question on um, the aims of educational technology so let me go to Arabes, um life where princess is saying that araba is going through the um the growth and maturity so we look at Arabes life and we know that physically araba is growing because she has learned to jump the rope she's jumping she's skipping and walking and all that she's able to do the things that she needs to do 
with her motor development then emotionally she has learned to deal with feeling sad emotionally too she's learning how to do that and that is where we talk about the uh, social emotional uh, development and then again with the social too we have when she learned how to recognize others needs she's dealing with a lot of people she come across a lot of people and uh, is able to uh, deal with those people's needs and as a teacher or a student teacher as you are learning this course you should be able to know how to deal with people's needs it's very very important you don't have to think about yourself alone then intellectually she is learning in the classroom she's learning in the classroom as we move on we will learn the uh, um, the bs skinners and the pavlovs and the rest and you'll know how learning takes place and all that okay i think i have some few questions okay somebody wants the aims of educational psychology okay let me go back so the aims i mentioned for educational psychology is that it's used to describe um, um, behaviors we use it to help describe behaviors we use to explain behavior why do people do the things they do then we also it also helps us to predict that is one of the aims to predict how one will think and act if you are in the classroom and the student do certain things you'll be able to know that this is what in the future the person may do it's a prediction you are not saying this is what will happen but you are making it a point that okay based on what i know about and uh, lifespan development and all that this is what may happen and again to change or to help influence and control behavior because we know and we are able to predict what will happen in the future we do this to be able to change behaviors to be able to change behaviors um mohammed is saying that okay let me go again there are lots of questions here um my question is i am teaching my students and the students are not getting what i'm teaching them how do i evaluate my students how did you get to know that they are not getting it it is through the same evaluation so you evaluate and they are not getting it if they are not getting it then it means that what we learned this is level two and i know that um i don't know whether muhammad as you wrote this you are, you are also taking principles and practice of teaching because if you are taking that course it will help you to know how to go about it you need to change your tactics you need to change your way of teaching so that you'll be able to help them how would they get it what methodology would i use to be able to help my students get the concept so you have finished teaching you evaluated and you realize that they are not getting it go back to the drawing board and see some of the things that you would do to be able to help them okay okay so people are just saying they are enjoying the lecture and we hope that FM. you are okay so with the studio lines as um is opened the number is zero five zero three nine two three one five eight you can call this number and also whatsapp or sms this number zero five zero three nine two three one five eight and you can only call this number that is zero three three two three two zero two zero one i'm taking it again zero three three two three two zero two zero one okay 
so let me go through briefly um what the definition of development is all about so development is defined as the orderly and progressive changes that do occur according to time as organisms move from conception to death i am stressing on this again it is defined as the orderly and progressive changes that do occur according to time as organisms move from conception to death i would like to say that as we move on in this course you realize that everything is about time everything is about progression everything is about orderliness so as i always take this course with my students i always tell them that look if the thing is not orderly is the thing does not go in a progressive way it doesn't happen according to time then there is a problem so i give example of if you give birth to a child the child comes out from the mother's womb and all you see is there are some uh, sets of teeth in the uh, uh, mouth of the child everybody will be alarmed because a neonate shouldn't have any teeth but the child has it how would you manage it it means that this did not happen at the right time it should be in a progressive way it should be orderly and it should happen according to time if at the age of one year to one year six months that is 18 months the child should be able to walk and the child is not doing so then it means there is a problem you should be alarmed by two years a child is not working you should be alarmed you need to quickly uh, um, um, prepare the child for the clinic and let's see what will uh, come out of it so development must happen in an orderly and progressive way and it should be done according to time now let's look at briefly what is growth and maturation as um, princess says that uh, arabes development is growth and maturation so what is growth somebody is on the line hello good morning Good morning. Please, madam, you are talking about factors of development psychology. Please. You mentioned motor or physical psychology, cognitive, and I didn't get the last one. I don't know whether I you can't, can. I can't hear you. Can you come again? Hello? 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 Okay, we've lost the person. We've lost the person. So growth is the physical of development. Growth is the physical of development. And it is quantifiable. It is quantifiable. It can be measured and influenced by genetics. So growth is the physical of development. It is quantifiable. It can be measured and influenced by genetics. So, for example, with what I read about Araba's life, the year Araba was 12, she got taller by 2 inches. This means that growth involves changes in size, in height, weight, etc. Then let's look at maturation. Maturation is the physical, intellectual, or emotional process of development. There's a difference. It is a physical, intellectual, or emotional process of development. Unlike growth, maturation is often not quantifiable and influenced by genetics. It can be said that it is the qualitative change that occurs in an individual at a particular stage in life for the performance of a certain task. So we are saying that with maturation, it is qualitative in nature and it happens at a particular stage in a person's life for a performance of a certain task so for example as araba became older her brain developed in a way that meant she was able to handle more complex tasks that makes her mature than she could before 
So what Araba could do using her brain, be able to think logically and to reason with people show that Araba is well matured in what she is doing. And that is maturation. Hello. That is maturation. Hello. 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 Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, madam. Yeah. Can I hear you? Hello. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, uh, you've mentioned uh, conflict psychology. I want to know more about it. Can you please go back and explain that one for me, please? What psychology? Hello. You said what psychology? Hello. I think today our lines are not helping us, but. Um, when you get to the lecture hall, you can also ask your lecturers to explain more about these things for you. There's more in psychology and uh, more to discuss. If I'm giving the opportunity, I'll talk more. Hello, good morning. Yeah, we've lost this one too. Okay, so I think the social media is really helping today. Somebody is asking, good morning, madam, please. Is the lecture for level 100 or 200? Okay, Dombo. Um, the lecture is for level 200 students. But if you are in level 100 and you want to listen to it, you can go ahead. It will be very helpful for you. Mm. Okay, so the lines are still activated. Maybe for the next five minutes because our time is up. Um, 050392. 3158 or 0332 320201. And please, when you call, you should kindly Hello. reduce the volume and move away from your radio set when you call because Hello. it gives us a lot of feedback. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Please, your name and your question. Hello. Yeah, hello. We can hear you. Good morning, madam. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, I'm calling the secretary for math department. Okay, please can, can you, you talk, talk a bit about uh, educational psychology and then uh, developmental psychology are different things. Okay. Developmental psychology can come from the educational psychology because I thought it is within the educational psychology. Yeah, it's but you know what we do is that some people learn developmental psychology. Mm -hmm just developmental psychology they learn just developmental psychology and we have people who are um, uh, into educational psychology the developmental psychology we want to you people to know why we are talking about developmental psychology because psychology of human development is about developmental psychology but you realize that the course title is in learning that is where the educational psychology comes in. So we want to learn the developmental psychology and apply it in our education. Hello. So how would you apply that? There is another person on the line. Hello. Yeah, we've lost this one. So um, if you ask me, we need developmental psychology to be able to know uh, educational psychology because you need to learn the lifespan and be able to apply it in the classroom um, there's a question here good morning madam this is uh, you are now from social studies department level 200 madam please you mentioned conflict psychology can you please let me understand conflicts hello <laughs> there's somebody on the line Yeah, hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello. I think we've lost. Can you talk a bit aloud? We cannot hear you. Hello? Okay. Um is it Yuana? Yes. Yuana. Uh, you are talking about conflict psychology. I don't know where I mentioned that. 
maybe I said something, then you thought I have mentioned uh, um, conflict psychology. Because even when I look into my uh, what I'm doing right now, I don't have anything in here. Maybe I, I mentioned something that sounded like conflict psychology, but um, I never mentioned anything of that sort. I mentioned pure and applied psychology, and I talked about general psychology, abnormal psychology, social psychology, experimental psychology, physiological psychology, parapsychology, and geopsychology. Maybe that's what brought about conflict. I don't know. But that is a pure psychology. And I said applied uh, the educational psychology, clinical psychology, industrial, legal, maybe military, then political and criminal psychology. Okay. So um, just get this right. Maybe there's something of that sort which I have not come across, but you can also Google and check it out. Okay, so with the concept of growth and development, now from what we have um, learned from Araba, we realize that growth is the physical aspect. It is the quantifiable one that we usually see because you see a baby, the next time you see the child in three, four years is taller than us you used to know. And by the time you realize the person is uh, um, um an old um, matured person let me remove the maturity there so that when i come to maturity you understand it better then we talked about maturity and we are saying that it is the qualitative aspect normally we do not see it unless the person exhibits it and that is how the way the person thinks how logical the person is when we go through uh, jim piaget's cognitive development you understand it better how the child uh, with infancy is not able to think logically and reason with adults the child becomes so egocentric but as they grow and become matured they are able to reason and you can even chat with them as adults because they are matured enough and so that is the difference between growth and maturity somebody is saying i should explain maturity to him i'm saying that maturity is qualitative in nature how we think how we do things because the way you think about it how you should be you will be able to reason with people and to take decisions in life that makes you a matured person but with growth is quantifiable it's easily seen compared to maturity where the person needs to exhibit something before you will be able to know and we do it in different ways we do it in different ways. The way Kofi would do his things will be different from the way Ab Araba. And so sometimes when we see them, we say, hey, nowadays, Araba is so matured compared to Kofi, who are of the same age because of the way they reason and talk. Today, it looks as if I've gone beyond. So let me le um, end here with what learning is all about. And we are going to say that learning is when a person acquires knowledge or experience. FM. Learning requires environmental influence. So the way we learn in our environment, the environment also counts a lot in the way we do things. So learning is when a person acquires knowledge or experience and learning requires environmental influence where you are coming from it talks a lot about you and therefore learning is defined as knowledge gained through study or a change in behavior of an individual through experience so then let's use araba again araba thinking of others needs as well as hers and learning to be healthy it's a typical example of how Allah, uh, um, she is learning, how Araba is learning. I think I will end here with a little bit of what or the reason why we should learn psychology. Oh, okay. So I think my producer has given me more time. <laughs> okay, so let me open the lines once again. 
let me open the lines once again um the lines are zero five zero three nine two three one five eight you can whatsapp this number as well okay zero five zero three nine two three one five eight then you can call only this number zero three three two three two zero two zero one zero three three two three two zero two zero one please kindly reduce the volume and move away from your radio set when you do call thank you very much windy bay 98.3 fm okay there's a question here good morning madam this is abel from geography department please can you repeat the factors of developmental psychology um is it the aims or the goals that i talked about i talked about the aims or the goals somebody also asked the same thing and i talked about uh, the prediction the uh, explanation i also talked about um change so we the aim is to describe another aim is to explain how people think and do things another is to predict then another one is to bring about change in an individual okay so there's a question here to madam please do we have a specific stage where maturation take place because some people are there at the age of 30 years will be acting like eight years old um yeah, okay the person didn't bring the name but it's interesting um the question you are asking um it's true some people behave in a certain way but uh, going into psychology i would not want to generalize with somebody who is 30 years and behaving like an eight year old and uh, sigmund freud had some defense mechanisms where he talked about regression one of them and he said sometimes we adults because we want attention sometimes we may want to regress into our childhood stages so that people will uh, uh, see that we are in need of something or we will get the attention from other people maybe that is what the person is exhibiting but if it's a it's it's something that is common to the person always the person is doing it then the person may have a problem so you need to watch out on that and um uh, the person may need help okay but it is rare for people who are 30 years to behave like 80 year old and all that sometimes they also do it intentionally they also do it intentionally to get the attention well, okay so Windy Bay. 98.3 FM. So we want to go through some advantages. We have about uh, seven minutes more. We want to go through some advantages of um, why um, psychology of human development and learning. This is something that I just brought up because some people are wondering why are we learning psychology of human development i've given the importance of educational psychology but i need to give the reason why we are learning this course as uuw uh, student teachers why are we learning this so one of the reason why we are doing this is to help us appreciate development through life help us appreciate development through life if you know more about this you will you will value your students okay you will appreciate them and where they are coming from you will not judge them and that helps you to teach well as a, 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 a teacher or as an instructor because you appreciate development and you know what they've gone through especially with those who have problems you may have a down syndrome child in your class how do you appreciate development and you know that it is not the fault of the child sh to have 47 chromosomes instead of uh, 46 that makes the person abnormal in a way and will have problems with what 
in, in, in intellect. So there's a lot of intellectual disability with such people. A normal person will come to your class. People who have what XO uh, uh, syndrome, it means that they are missing the sex link. Either the mother or the father did not bring one X. And so instead of having two, the person has only one. The person looks so normal in the classroom, but is not because of a missing uh, 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 chromosome. So you, you will need to appreciate these things when you learn psychology of human development. And that will help you. Again, you will learn how people are able to learn. When we talk about the Pavlov's and um, where you use the dog and all those things, the reinforcement, the punishment that comes and all that. How Maslow talked about motivation, the thing that's, uh, things that motivate our learning. All these things will help you to appreciate people. Then again, it helps us better understand ourselves. All that I explained before will let you know that we will be able to understand ourselves more. And so we will not judge our students in any way. Then to learn more about the children we teach. When we learn this, we will be able to know more about the children we teach. And so it makes teaching and learning so easy. It comes in handy because we know psychology of human development and learning. And it helps to interact with the children we teach. We are able to interact with them. It is lifespan development. When they come to the class and things are going wrong, you can ask them questions to know where they are coming from, to know how to go about their uh, uh, teaching and learning process. Then again, to be able to spot problems. That is the interesting aspect. To be able to spot problems. When you see the problems, you can quickly address them. When you see the problems, you know that this problem, it is not going to end today. Or this problem, we need to start early so that we can seal the situation. So that it doesn't go off hand. Or it will get to a time that we will not be able to uh, um, handle it. So it helps us to spot problems. Um, okay, so two questions in here. Um, please, madam, I want to know the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist. Okay, so you remember we when we were learning the concept of psychology itself, we said it's a scientific study of the mind. Um, people who are psychiatrists, they look at the mental aspects of our lives, especially those who have gone a bit abnormal. And they are the ones we are talking about as psychiatrists they go deeper to learn why certain things happen to certain individuals okay so they will be able to help to restructure or rehabilitate individuals from abnormal to normal these are the psychiatric people then psychologists i would say that as for psychology when you say the psychiatric person or psychiatrist is in psychology because it is a branch of what the psychology psychology is the main thing I am into counseling psychology, so I'm a psychologist. I'll call myself a psychologist, but I have branched into counseling. We have people who are in clinical psychology. We have the psychiatric people. We have the organizational uh, uh, psychologists and all that. So psychology is the main uh, um, umbrella. Then the rest of us are under the umbrella. This is Richard Ando from Social Studies Department. Madam. Is it right to define development as the qualitative and quantitative changes that an organism experiences? Yes, Richard, you are right. So it is the qualitative and quantitative changes that an organism experiences. But the, with this one, how would a layman understand your qualitative and quantitative changes? So you need to explain it further. But your definition is right. Thank you. I think um, our time is up. Today we've gotten more time to elaborate more on our concepts in psychology of human development and learning. God willing, next week, Dr. Bedu Ado will come your way with principles 
of um, uh, uh, psychology of human development and learning. And so, listen to him. It's one of the cons um, topics that I like very well because it applies to the classroom. And so, you should listen critically and make some notes and meaning out of it. Again, our V class is open. Get there. Those of you in my class, the English students, I've made everything readily available for you. Whether you want the video lecture, whether you want the audio lecture, and those of you who want to read, everything is there. I've also made available um, books online for you. I've given you sessions that you are supposed to read. I want to make your learning um, easy for you. So as you uh, stay in your rooms and come for lecture as and when you are supposed to, make use of the online classes is very very important and make time and go for lecture wear your mask wherever you go and even in the classroom sanitize your hand if the opportunity is there for you to wash your hands with soap and water please do so don't touch your faces and make sure you take good care of yourself i am dr patricia mousy amos from um let me say Department of Educational Foundations because that is what I'm doing the course for. My, my main department is Counseling Psychology. Um, you can get me uh, in the department for any counseling issues as well. Thank you very much and take care. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much. Uh